here, um, Terry Parletti and Tonique and KJ and Delina. Thank you for making the trip here from Minneapolis. So as I mentioned, when we opened um, the streets, the anti-trafficking project I co-lead with Ara at UW-Madison, we, one of the survivor leaders we work with um, through streets lives in Minneapolis and is an artist. Her name's Chris Stark, and she has been working with Breaking Free on some different um, art projects and then lots of other things. Um, but she uh, recommended this organization to us last spring, or really a year and a half ago. And Breaking Free brought 10 survivors to our 4W annual Gender and Women's Studies Conference uh, last spring, and they were a panel like this one, and they got a standing ovation and rocked the house. It was just amazing. Um, we just did a great job. So Demita and Terry were here for that, and then this year we have two, two more leaders in that organization. So just on a personal level, I wanted to share that story and thank and of course, what was so beautiful too was in front of that large university audience, you had authoritative leaders speaking, using, sharing what the community can do to support them. And you had most of them giving glory to God for their freedom and their sobriety and different um, the progress that they've made. And it was, just, it was just a beautiful thing. So thank you for that. And I'm going to turn it over to Terry to introduce the organization more thoroughly. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Terry Ferletti. I'm the executive director for Breaking Free. And before I go further, I want to apologize to any of anyone in this room if I offended anyone. After a few minutes of me talking, you'll understand my personality. It's a little outgoing, and sometimes I sound forceful because I'm a felon. I'm a victim of sexual abuse for 30 years. I was considered a crack hoe. Nobody wanted to hear what I had to say. And now that I work with women in this field, and 60% of them are women of color, um, I get really emotional as well. And, and what we need to do is come together um, to resolve some of these issues. So I, I just apologize because I, I don't think a lot of people know my personality. But um, And then I do want to mention one thing in Minneapolis that's a little bit different. Well, there's a quite a few things in Minnesota that are different. One is that we have some laws put in place that help us um, put away traffickers and, and, uh, and johns, if you will, because we have taken force, fraud, or coercion out of our laws. And that's something that we are working with folks in Wisconsin to do as well. So the federal definition of human trafficking is you have to prove force, fraud, or coercion. You don't do that in, in Minnesota. The second thing is we've got something, a law that you guys have been working on for a couple of years called safe harbor. So anyone that is, what ages does that start? Okay, so 18 and under, and then now it goes up to 24 years old. So what that means is if you find a person that's 17 years old, and they're uh, being trafficked, there's no way they can get arrested. There's no way. So we have lost, and not only that, they also are viewed as a victim, and they are eligible for services. Now what we did a couple years ago was we raised the age, because we all know that just because you're 17, now you're 18, what the hell happened? Not a thing. You know, so we're raising the age, and what we want to see is um, it's safe harbor for all, that there are no age restrictions whatsoever. Um, we are a survivor-based organization. 80% uh, of my staff is sur our survivors, and I'm going to introduce you to a couple of them right now, and then what we want to do is go through, I think on your tables, you have um, these sheets that uh, summarize what, so if you want to take notes, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about specifics, what you can do as the church. So before we begin, I'd like to introduce our panel, and if you, each of you could say your name and uh, what your position is. I'm Tony, and I work in the Permanent Support of Housing Program. 
I'm KJ and I'm a women's advocate. I provide direct services and case management for the women that we serve. Hi, I'm Demita and I am the vice chair of the board. Okay, so one of the things that we want to talk about, first of all, um, before we get into some of the prayer awareness, prevention, legal and mental health advocacy, some of the things that we can do at the church is, um, I'm going to have KJ talk first. Um, KJ is one of our women's advocates, and she works with a caseload of anywhere between, I don't know, 30 to 50 people at any given time. Um, and she also has a ministry, and I'm going to let her talk about that a little bit, and share, and I don't know if there's other people in your community, if there's... Uh, survivors that you could bring along to accomplish some of this, but I'm going to just let her share and uh, tell you what it is that she does to bring justice. Thank you. Okay, so, and this will address things that the church can do. Um, first of all, I just want to say this is, has been an amazing experience. Um, I am so grateful to hear the powerful voices that were before us and the truth that they speak, because within this realm, it can be really challenging to speak about the truth, especially the things that survivors see um, in the church, the discrepancies, the falsehoods, the fakeness, um, and it's difficult to address because of, oftentimes people in the church will see us with broken, we're broken. I'm the broken one. And it's the sad eyes. We get the sad eyes. And they don't realize that the language that I can carry with me to teach you um, what it is that I've been through. And it's a lived language experience. You can't learn it from reading a book. I mean, read the books, but you can't learn it from just listening to stories. So that's why you have to falter to and respect the people who have these lived experiences. Um, okay, so I, but I'm grateful because that was how it started out, and I was like, what, this is good. So, um, uh, set the stage. Um, so, uh, I run a ministry called Beautiful and Loved. It was founded in 2012. We do, um, it's a strip club ministry, which was birthed out of my own experience having worked in a strip club when I was younger. So we're a faith-based, survivor-led outreach and care group for women who work in the strip clubs in the Twin Cities. And what we do is we uh, bring gifts along with a handwritten card into the strip clubs, and we hand-deliver them to the women working there. Um, we do not go in with a mission. We do not go in with an agenda, because people who are um, working in that situation can smell your agenda from a mile away and we don't want to be that we want to be a support we want to be build relationships our goal is to simply walk in there and let God do his work we've tried to be like okay let's do the you guys were tre treasure hunting and stuff like we're gonna pray when we see that girl with the fishnets and red stilettos we're gonna reach her we've tried all of those things and every time God is like, that's not what I asked you to do. I asked you to go in here, there and look through my eyes. You can receive a hug from a person who has nothing but a thong and stilettos on and still see her the way that God created her to be. And I'm not going to be able to do that by myself. I have to let God in to do that. So um, do we sometimes pray with the women? Absolutely. But do we go in there with the agenda to say, I'm going to find someone to pray for. I'm looking for the broken. No, because that's not what God sees. Okay, so um, we're complete, I'll say this too, we're also completely volunteer-based. Not one of us gets a penny for what we do. And um, we receive donations from people to be able to provide those gifts. So um, um, something that God has put on my heart to share with the church is... Um, the language that we use is very important, okay? God spoke creation, right? And he said it was what? It was good, right? He didn't say it was broken. 
So I get emails from people who say, I have a heart for the broken. And I write back and I say, thank you so much. We would love to have you join us to package the gifts that's, that we will deliver to God's beautiful daughters. Because that's what they are and that's what we are. Your heart might feel broken. And that's okay. You can grieve. But if you're driving past a strip club and you're saying, God, shut that place down, then you are confused like the rest of the world is about sexual exploitation. You are confused like the world is about...